Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Without translation, we would be living in provinces bordering on silence. George Steiner said. I am delighted to talk to you today about a special and unusual topic. It is unusual because it uh, suggests some ideas on how to address an unfair situation and will attempt to justify why both original authors and translators need to be made to enjoy the same status. Almost by definition, the greatest translators are those whose work is, most, is the most inconspicuous. Th those translators were, and still are, vocationally invisible. This talk will attempt to drag some of the translators from the shadow of history and the dimness of present times. And we'll try to put them in the spotlight. As a translator and interpreter myself, I feel like we spend a lot of time roving around like vagabonds in making our descent known. We complain all the time of authors, clients and conferences, conference organizers. But basically everyone and, and, and basically everyone else who ignore the value of the work we are doing. But it is always good to accentuate the positive in any approach. It would seem paradoxical to present translators as fully-fledged authors. After all, authorities are original authors and translations are merely vehicles by which the meaning of the original, of the original authors is being conveyed and relayed in another language. Translators have long been regarded as completely sub sub subservient to the original authors. They have been forced to hide, to hide their productive agency, to hide their creative minds behind the greater personality of the authors. The role of the translator has been perceived and presented as one that requires obedience almost a shadowy role as a medium for another great mind. There has been an entire trend in literary translation, in codes of ethics, and so on, that require the translator not only to be neutral and passive, passive career of meanings, but also to be like the smell of ether, felt but unseen. The more he is invisible and absent from his own text, the more he is praised and valued. In this way, he is presented like a cunning thief whose skill is measured by, by, by how well he is able to hide in the darkness, in the shadow, and cover up his crime. So many publishing houses in the Arab world deliberately, deliberately refrain from putting the names of translators on the cover pages of translated uh, books and publications. But when translation is the only channel available through which the authors can convey their meaning, can convey their images and messages Translators, with their roving minds, will become a sine qua non condition for the survival of that meaning and justifiably become communicating champions in their own right. The Arabic and Islamic civilization enjoyed its golden age, which can also be called the translation age under the Abbasid dynasty from the 8th, 8th century till the end of the 12th century almost. 
So the flourishing of knowledge and philosophy at, at the time was made possible thanks to the flowering movement of translation. Greek, Persian, uh, Indian knowledge was translated into Arabic. And, and the work of translators like Hunayn ibn Ishaq uh, and Yuhanna ibn al-Batriq uh, had rapidly made Baghdad the Mecca of all scientists, philosophers and artists of that age. Also, medieval translators and the greatest impact on scholarship and, and, and authority was made by translation. Uh, almost all the authoritative texts of the West in the Middle Ages were translations in Latin, whether of Aristotle, Plato, or of uh, Ibn Sina, Avicenna, uh, Al-Ghazali, uh, Aviroz, uh, Ibn Rushd, or Al-Khawarizmi. There was hardly anyone who would access these texts in their original languages in Europe, including Greek and Arabic, of course. The most significant mathematical innovations in the 12th century and 13th century uh, were the introduction of algebra into Western Europe through the translation of Al-Khawarizmi by prominent translators such as Girard de Cremona of the Toledo School of Translation. It's a very nice city, Toledo. Girard did not, according to the literature, put his name to any of his translations. De Cremona is not unique in being ascribed as a high intellectual status. Richard Burton was yet another great translator, whose translation of the Arabian Nights, Alf Layla wa Layla, the translation enjoyed a huge public success, despite the fact that he used an archaic language the translation was bold, imaginary, and authoritative. He was inventing his own uh, vocabulary and, 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 and way of saying it, if necessary. In the present time, so many writers have become more widely known and recognized by the public after getting their works translated in other languages. So the supremacy or authoritativeness of the original text can sometimes be challenged by its own translation. For instance, the Moroccan writer and translator Tahir bin Jaloun has made the novel Al-Khubz Al-Hafi, Bread Alone, has made it largely known and fully appreciated worldwide after he skillfully and marvelous, marvelously performed its French translation, Le Pain Nu. The novel was originally written in Arabic by his compatriot, Mohammed Shukri, and the Arabic original failed to make it into a universally accepted masterpiece, like its French translation did. However, by being silent on his contribution, Shukri did not give justice to, his, to this distinguished translator. So in the literature, there has been tension between the authority of the translation and the invisibility of the translator. I would like to argue that the translators are prizing, and it is not a strong word here, I think, as I see it happening now, the uprising, against enforced invisibility and or obedience is marking a turning point in the, his, in the history of this practice.
large numbers of translators and interpreters have become determined to have the same size of ego as that of any creative writer or erudite scholar or expert or speaker. They are the interpretation of great works like Kaisel's interpre interpreting Bach or Bach or Olivier in acting Shakespeare. What it is, what is it that does a writer? And what is it that does a translator? I think the translator is created with the same force of creativity, the same force of originality as that of an original author. And that force is behind the current uprising, I think. Translation and interpreting offer a front row seat to history or a chance to rub shoulders with world leaders as well as the odd tyrant, as the Guardian has put it. And I would like to add to the list presidents whose narcissism made flesh. And here I mean the Trump-like presidents. To put it in a nutshell, the human translator has been a refreshingly creative, productive and powerful driving force in the development of human civilization. A force of interconnection, connecting peoples and cultures together and enjoying the glory, the glory of genuine connectivity, not the fake and misleading digital connectivity. And I think it is legitimate now to pause the question whether or not the original can be faithful to the translated. Thank you very much for your time.